Hi everyone. Today we will be continuing our PLC learning series looking at programming steps. Now developing a programmable logic controller or PLC program can be broken down into different steps. There are five steps to the PLC program development. And the first step is defining the task. The second is defining the inputs and outputs. The third is a developing a logical sequence of operation for the program. Next is actually the developing of the program. This is where you're going to write the program and then finally testing the program. So these five steps to PLC program development will help you understand, program and troubleshoot your automated machine. And we will be looking at each of these steps in a little more detail as we discuss the PLC programming development. Let's get started. Detailed information contained in the video can be found at accautomation.ca. A link has been put in the description below. If you have not watched the other videos yet, there will be links in the description below that will start you at video one. There will be links to the rest of the videos in the series as well. So a PLC programmer must know everything about the machine before they can program it. Five steps must be done for every PLC program written. Each step must be fully understood before continuing to the next. Sometimes during the next step, the previous one may be visited again. This is due to additional or clarifying information that's uh, brought in. And this process will get you to a PLC program that will function as expected in operation. So look, taking a look at the first step is defining the task. What has to happen? This step is a collection of information about how the machine is to function. Conversations with owners, engineers, maintenance, operators, etc., are a few of the people that you need to talk to to understand how the machine will function. And I find opening and ending questions are best to ask. These are uh, so you can picture um, what like opening and ending questions would be like, how do you picture this to operate? What happens when? Uh, do your similar machines have some current problems? How is the machine maintained? And then write this information down and summarize your findings. The next step sometimes forces you to go back to individuals and ask further questions. Good note taking is important. This is one of the most important steps of the PLC program development. Now, after you have your defined task and what you want to do is you want to define the inputs and outputs. Now, from the information of step number one, you'll determine the inputs and outputs required to perform the operations. This input and output list may also be provided to you. Review the requirements and, and ensure that everything is included. The inputs and outputs refer to both discrete on-off and analog inputs and outputs. Any special communications can also be included in this step. An example would be a temperature controller that you want to communicate Modbus RTU and get the process temperature back to ensure that's within a certain range. And remember that if a control panel is required, make sure that the inputs like start, stop, reset, emergency stop, etc., are included. And outputs like lights, counters, etc., are also um, sometimes forgotten on these panels. Next, once we have that we should develop a logical sequence of operation. This is where the majority of your time is going to be spent in PLC program development. So with steps one and two allow you to systematically express what has to happen in the PLC program. So you grab that information and then you start laying it out. And in this particular case, we can use a flowchart, we can use a sequence table and Either one, as long as you fully understand at every step what has to happen within the logic. Um, and often people will do this step um, or avoid this step altogether. And when they do, then it allows you or what it will do is it'll make you do more programming and it'll make you um, very difficult to program. So right now, this is where you put all that knowledge in. And sometimes based on what you see and the events that happen, sometimes it really doesn't make sense. And that's where you have to go back to the people that actually want this machine um, accomplished and talk to individuals again about what actually has to happen and what does happen when certain things happen. So when we do this, we can also um, uh, 
then once we have all this information down, we have the sequence of operation, we know what's going to happen. Um, we have our IO view and we've systematically went through every step. Then what we do is we actually are now going to develop the PLC program. And this actually is quite uh, quick, this, this part of it. And usually you develop with a PLC or a controller that you are very familiar with and that you understand. And if not, then it's just a matter of looking at that information that you already have and then applying it to that program. And we do that usually through ladder logic. So ladder logic then will control the inputs and outputs that we have specified within our control. And then we have, that's step number four, develop that PLC program. Next, and the final step would be in developing of, um, or developing and testing that program. So test the logic that you developed. Once again, the previous steps are helpful in the process. First, start with what is referred to as ringing out the I.O. This is where you would trigger the inputs and set the outputs to verify the wiring and communication. And then PLC program development testing is an important step to test all the conditions for the logic. So like power cycle, sensors failing, safety, etc. So test the program with the simulator or actual machine. Make modifications as necessary and check with the people most knowledgeable on the machine to see if it's doing what they expect. And what I would do is after the program is commissioned to go back after a month or so and again ask, is everything working fine? Are we good to go? And is there anything else that we need to add in the program to make this more user friendly? So if you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button below. If you have any questions about the video, please leave a comment below and I'll do my best to answer it. If you want more information about us or you want our free eBooks on numbering systems or robust data logging, please click on the link in the description below to get it. A new video is put out every Monday, so make sure you hit the subscribe button to get more videos like this in the future. Remember to click the bell beside your subscription to actually receive those notifications. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you next time. Stay safe.